welcome back to the channel y'all chris the camping texan here where in the world is the geo pro this weekend we're set up at kickapoo cavern state park this is campsite number five well y'all this episode of the camping texan is dedicated to uh, my father-in-law mr brock who passed away recently at 78 and a half years old mr brock we're gonna miss you dearly gonna miss talking nascar with you he was an avid fan of the camping texan and he always loved to watch when our episodes would drop on Saturday evenings. He always liked to see what adventures that we were on. So you'll be sorely missed, but we love you dearly. Godspeed. Well, good afternoon, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have y'all out at the campsite with me. I sure enjoyed my trip over to Lake Livingston State Park uh, last weekend. It was kind of a surprise visit. Uh, that's one of our home parks. So whenever we just want to get away, um, it's really easy to get a reservation out there. So we just pack it up and, and go out there. And, and that's what I decided to do. So uh, please make sure if you haven't checked out that video to do so, Lake Livingston State Park. But y'all, this weekend we're at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. And uh, what's cool about this park, y'all, is that this used to be a ranch. So back in the 1920s, the Sargent family, uh, they came here to work this land. They had sheep and goat, and um, they passed the ranch on to their son, Tommy. Now, Tommy was a county judge here in the area, and he always wanted to make sure that this land uh, was able to be used by the public. So that's how the state acquired this land in the 80s, 1980s, and designated it as a state park now this park is cool because it has two unique features and one it has the kickapoo cavern and it also has the stewart bat cave so y'all come and join me and uh and we'll check out kickapoo cavern state park now y'all when i made this reservation for the fourth of july weekend i never imagined that i would have an entire state park to myself but that's exactly what has happened i have enjoyed Three days, y'all, of peace and quiet. Um, when I first got here, there were two other campers. There was a camper in Site 4 and uh, a pop-up in Site 3. They have left, and I now have the entire park to myself. And let me tell you, um, it is, it's nice. It's kind of eerie, uh, but nice. Well, let's take a look at your campsite, y'all. Uh, we're in number five this weekend at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. Uh, one of the things that I love about this campsite is the Cardinals. The Cardinals, uh, they must have a nest in this grouping of trees here because they are everywhere in our campsite. They're flying on the truck. They're on the ground. I mean, they're just so cute. You're going to love the Cardinals when you come here. Um, you can hear them now. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get the, what I don't like about this campsite out of the way, and then we'll talk about what I like. Uh, the services, 20, 30, 50 amp electric and water. The electric hooked up great, no issues. The water, not so great. Um, definitely needs maintenance. Uh, State Park needs to come out here, and they need to, they need to fix this. Uh, when I got here, I found a set of pliers uh, laying there. Um, obviously they encourage you to try to tighten this up the best you can. Now I've tried every which way but loose and uh, it got it to a drip. And so that's where it's going to live. Um, so they definitely, they need to get this fixed. And I don't know y'all that I would stay in five until they get it fixed. So if you're thinking about number five, after I show you this, you might want to inquire with headquarters and, and make sure that, that they've taken care of that issue. But you get sewer, full hookup. You don't have to go to the dump station unless you just want to. Um, now, one of the things that I like about five versus seven is the yard space. I think this would be a more kid-friendly, dog-friendly kind of site here. Uh, beautiful view of the surrounding hills. I love it. It's so peaceful here, y'all. Uh, you've got cactus here in your yard, a lot of little bushes and and trees the trees are are spaced out uh, so 
really every direction you look, you've got a, a gathering or grouping of trees. Um, a nice little shade shelter over the picnic table, aluminum picnic table on a nice level concrete pad. You have two grills, y'all. Can't beat that, right? Standing grill and then an in-ground grill and fire ring. Now, we're here. This is 4th of July weekend. There's a burn ban. Yeah, but we can still have a containerized or charcoal fire. So we'll get us a nice brisket going this weekend. Double lantern hook and pole. And then um, if you notice, as I mentioned with Campsite 7, um, all of these RV sites are ADA compliant. And you have sidewalks that lead to the restroom. So you may want to consider five if you're in need of the restroom facilities. Uh, but what I like about it is that the restroom is, is hidden over there. So the, the trees kind of cover it. You don't really see it while you're here in the campsite, but it is close if you need it. Um, you're also close to the day use area. Uh, if you guys can see that uh, between the trees, as well as the dump station is relatively close behind you. This is a wide open site, y'all. And I mean, it's it's really wide uh, gravel type site. You can get any size rig in here. It's huge. Um, there's nobody like really directly across from you. Um, you have six, but six is hidden over there. So that's not really an issue. The only thing that I found about this site is that other people uh, walking from their campsites to go to the restroom. So you do see a lot of foot tra traffic coming back and forth. Um, to the restroom area but really with the views um, you can't you can't beat it it's really really pretty sight satellite TV has been amazing this weekend y'all locked into all my channels I was a little bit worried about the limbs on the trees but uh, nothing's blocking us we're getting locals out of San Antonio uh, cell phone service it was not that great. I had to put up the, the cell booster, the Wii Boost. Um, when we got here, we were getting no service to maybe one bar. I put up the cell booster, and now we're getting two bars of AT&T. So uh, definitely that Wii Boost destination is, uh, is awesome. I'm definitely a purchase I'm glad that I made. Now they sell, if you guys want firewood and you're not here during a burn ban, um, down by their maintenance shed here, close to headquarters, they, they offer firewood for sale, if that's something that you're interested in. As far as insects go, y'all, uh, bees and ants. So far, those are the only two that uh, have really kind of, I wouldn't even say given us trouble, but uh, that's all we've seen. And uh, the ants aren't that bad. They're really big ants. And uh, they just kind of crawl around. They don't really mess with you. Well, y'all, let's talk about uh, services. If you need any supplies while you're out here, I highly suggest you bring them before you start your journey out here. It is 22 miles down FM 674 to get to the park. You are in a secluded location. Um, Brackettville is going to be your best bet, y'all. There's a Stripes uh, Valero gas station right there. They offer gasoline, uh, many food items that you might need, ice. Uh, there's also a Family Dollar, uh, Dollar Tree, and a Dollar General all down the road from that Stripes gas station. Um, so they're also going to offer propane and ice and whatever else that you might need. Uh, to enjoy your stay while you're out here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. But y'all, I want to talk about something stinky. I know. It's trash. Now, this is um, a state park that does not have dumpsters. So, make sure that you bring extra trash bags when you're out here. You're going to have to pack out whatever trash that you bring in uh, with you for the week or the weekend or however long you're staying. You may definitely want to utilize the double hook lantern pole um, and hang up your trash bag. I would not recommend leaving it out here overnight or putting it in the back of your truck. So, you know, you may have to live with it, tie it up, put it in the corner of your camper or something. 
Uh, just wanted you to be aware that there are no dumpsters out here and whatever trash you bring with you, you must take with you. Another campsite that you may enjoy is number seven. Now number seven has a really long uh, gravel pad here. You could get any size rig in here, class A, fifth wheel. Um, and these pad sites are not all that level uh, front to back, but uh, what I've found with my campsite this weekend is it, even though it's not level front to back, it wasn't uh, difficult getting leveled out. So uh, don't let that deter you from coming here. Services, y'all, 20, 30, 50 amp electric and water, as well as sewer. Uh, so there's your box there. We'll go ahead and turn those off. So there's your sewer connection right there. And what I love about this campsite, y'all, is this uh, little grove of trees right here. This is really cool. Provides some shade. And then the view of the uh, surrounding hills. It's real, really beautiful, y'all. And then you get some uh, bushes here in the back of your campsite. What's really cool is uh, the uh, RV campsites here at Kickapoo Cavern is uh, ADA compliant. So every one of these RV campsites, um, you're going to have a, an access, a sidewalk to the restroom facilities and, and the parking lot for this campsite. So you get the elevated grill as well as a standing grill, a double lantern uh, hook. And pole, and then you've got a nice little shade shelter over your aluminum picnic table here. And then over on this side, you you get more bushes and trees. And then what's really nice about this campsite is directly across from you, um, there's no one. So your view is is going to be uh, it's going to be some trees and some bushes and cactus, and all in all, it's not a bad looking campsite. So uh, maybe when you come out here. This might be a campsite that you want to try. Now, y'all, this next campsite I'm going to show you is number six. This is going to be for my tent campers and my boondockers. And if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that I like cozy. And six fits the bill, y'all. I love it. It's got a, a deep uh, a pad site. It goes way back here. If you're not relying upon services, I'm telling you now, uh, bring your rig out here. If you've got solar, a solar setup, and and um, uh, you've got capability to uh, have your own water on board, this is a great site. Now they offer water spigot uh, just across the street by campsite number seven, so you could fill up your water and bring it back over here if you needed to. But uh, y'all, I'm I'm thinking this is pretty cool. I really like the trees that surround it. It's just really nice. Uh, it seems hidden. Now you don't get the cover over the picnic table uh, like you do over at the RV sites, but you still get the double lantern hook and pole, um, in-ground grill and firing. There's a place to put your tent right there. You're not that far from the restroom, so easily within walking distance. But just all this back here, I mean, just so cool. So if you're uh, if you're looking for a campsite with a little bit of solitude, uh, you guys may want to give six a try. If you want a tent camp or boondock and you're looking for uh, a little seclusion, guys, I have to recommend 12. Uh, 12 seems to be set off a little bit farther away from everything else, but uh, you get a water spigot here as well as one close to the picnic table area. Uh, because of the site not being level uh, front to back, I would say probably something small if you're going to do the boondocking thing, uh, Casita, our pod. Uh, something like that. Something really small that you can level out up here at the top of the hill. Uh, but this is really nice. It's uh, got a lot of cover. A lot of trees and bushes to keep you hidden. 
The campsite is still relatively close to headquarters as well as the Sargent Memorial Trail. Um, you get an amazing view from the campsite of the surrounding hills. Nice in-ground grill and fire ring, double lantern hook and pole, aluminum picnic table, and a shade shelter. So uh, maybe give this one a try if you're looking maybe for a little bit more solitude. Now 14, y'all, 14 is pretty cool. I love how it's uh, the pad is, is kind of cut into the ground here. And then you've got the surrounding area that's a little bit higher next to it. But you get a lot of trees and shrubs, a lot of cover here, cactus. Pretty cool, y'all. And then back here, you want to set your tent up. Really nice space for that. Again, this will be for tent camping or um, if you're willing to do a little boondocking. Um, you have a, a water spigot that's nearby, an in-ground grill and fire ring, as well as an aluminum picnic table. You'd need to bring your own um, awning. They don't have a shade structure over this picnic table, but you also get a double lantern hook and pole. But uh, I really like this site, y'all. should come in and check it out. If you're interested in a group camping situation, out here at Kickapoo Cavern, they have the Indigo Creek group area. Um, so they have water spigots uh, conveniently located for you to get water. Uh, there's a large parking area. So maybe you're considering maybe a, a large family gathering or maybe uh, scouts uh, camp out. This is great, y'all. Um, they have three picnic tables that have shade shelters. And then there's also trees that are uh, located close by uh, with the exception of this one uh, they have in-ground grill and fire ring double lantern hook and pole uh, aluminum picnic tables on concrete pads uh, in fact there is a ADA compliant picnic table right there uh, except that picnic table doesn't have a shelter on it and then we're also close to uh, to a trail over here and so this is actually a trail that we will be coming out on this morning. So I'll walk over here and show you guys that. Uh, this is called the Pine Canyon Loop Trail. So just a very nice group camping area. Uh, just know that there's no services out here except for water, no electricity, but maybe uh, an area that you want to give a try the next time you're out here. Well, y'all, Kickapoo Cavern has a really nice dump station. It's a really wide driveway. Um, you're not going to need to visit the dump station out here. All the sites that they have for RVs are full hookups, uh, but you you may you may need to come out here and, and use this if you can't get your tanks emptied at your campsite, or if you decide to do a boondocking situation, uh, stay in one of the tent sites that doesn't have full hookups. But uh, they do have you covered out here, y'all. They've got a single sewer connection, a non-potable water tap to do your black tank flush, as well as they have a a working light out here. So. Uh, they've got you covered.
Well, I hope you are enjoying your tour of Kickapoo Cavern State Park so far. Why don't you go ahead and lace up your hiking boots and I'll show you around the trails. I highly encourage that uh, you take the uh, Sargent Memorial Trail. It's a really easy seven tenths of a mile hike, but it offers some spectacular and breathtaking views of the uh, surrounding hills and area. Uh, out on the trail, you'll see a lot of cactus, uh, a lot of rocks. Make sure you watch your step. Uh, it is rated as a moderate trail, uh, but this this has to be uh, one of the best parts of the hike is coming up here and, and reading this memorial to uh, to Tommy Sargent. Uh, we owe a lot of gratitude to uh, Mr. Sargent for not only his service as a county judge, but uh, his willingness and, and effort to keep this ranch going and then when he passed, he wanted to make sure that this land was passed on to the Texas Parks and Wildlife. And so we all get to enjoy it because of of his uh, service and uh, gratitude. So thank you, Mr. Sergeant. But uh, guys, there's a nice little shade shelter that they put up here. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Seminole Canyon State Park um, where you can just kind of stop and reflect, uh, take a good look around. So y'all make sure that you get up here and, and check out the Sergeant Memorial Trail. Um, make sure, uh, take your time as you start the trail and uh, you'll pass um, the old concrete vat where they used to uh, take the sheep through and they would get all the parasites off of them. And then you'll also see the, the windmill. So uh, just a nice, just a nice little trail that you can enjoy here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. Well, y'all, we're gonna check out a portion of the Long Way Home Trail. Uh, this trail, if you were to do the entire trail, would be about 6.7 miles. So this morning, um, we're gonna just do a small portion of it and run it over to the uh, bird blind and then we're going to go over to Armadillo Lookout and then just kind of loop our way back so y'all come out and join me. I really am enjoying the Long Way Home Trail. Um, I'm gonna let you guys know it's really not that bad. The elevation changes aren't that bad. Uh, wear a comfortable pair of shoes. The rocks aren't that big. Uh, it's very soft, actually, and comfortable uh, walking on this trail. So, highly recommend that you take some part of the Long Way Home Trail, or do it all. But we have made our way, guys, to um, to the intersection of the Long Way Home and the Barbado Ridge Trail. Now, if you take a right on Barbado Ridge. It's a 2.2 mile connector that just joins the Long Way Home Trail, or you can stay on the Long Way Home Trail and keep going uh, up. But uh, for today, I'm going to actually take the Barbado Ridge Trail to the left, and um, it's going to cross the road, and we're gonna go over to the Virio Vista, and then go over to uh, Armadillo Lookout. So that's where we're headed. Well, that was fast, y'all. We made it over to the Virio Vista Trailhead. Now, this trailhead is very popular for birding. So, uh, make sure you bring your camera gear when you're out here. Your binoculars, you might spot your favorite bird. Well, I apologize for the wind, y'all, but uh, I highly recommend that you take the three-tenths of a mile hike up the Armadillo Lookout Trail off the Virio Vista Trail. You get some amazing views of here, guys. Well, the Armadillo Lookout Trail proved to be the most challenging trail here. Um, make sure that you're sure-footed. Um, it's steep. There's a lot of loose rock. Uh, just be very careful going up to Armadillo Lookout, but uh, the view is stunning. Uh, it's definitely worth your time. 
uh, to check this trail out. But now we're going to uh, we're going to continue our hike on out here on the Vario Vista Trail, uh, Kickapoo Cavern State Park. Uh, puts a bench right here underneath the shade tree. Uh, they do a really good job of strategically placing uh, benches where you need them and where you can get a really nice view of the surrounding area. We all we've made it to the end of the Vario Vista Trail and uh, we're about to cross the intersection here of the Vario Vista the Indigo Creek and Pine Canyon Loop Trails. We're gonna be taking the Pine Canyon Loop Trail, which is about two miles, and it will actually end in the group camping area. Now this was very unexpected, uh, not very far out here on Pine Canyon Loop, and looks like we were run across a, a dry creek bed. That's pretty cool. Well, y'all, the Pine Canyon Loop offers uh, some of the remnants of the past from the Sargent Ranch. Uh, when you're out here, you'll see several of these water tanks that they use to uh, water, uh, use water for their sheep and their goats that are right here on the ranch. Well, y'all, after two miles of hiking the Pine Canyon Loop, we've made it to the end of the trail. And we're about to approach the group camping area. So, um, highly recommend the trail system out here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. Had an amazing time. Can't wait to get back. And uh, maybe do all seven miles of the long way home trail. Uh, but that will be on a cooler day. So, y'all get out here. Check the spark out. Check the trails out. You're going to have an amazing visit. Well, y'all, after that amazing hike we had this morning, uh, got a brisket smoking on the grill. So we're gonna eat good tonight, y'all. But um, I did have one more uh, piece of information I wanted to share with you in regard to supplies. Uh, in Brackettville, I mentioned there was a Stripes and uh, Dollar General and Family Dollar, but there's also a Lowe's grocery store and it's right there on the right hand side as you go back into Brackettville. Uh, let's say you're leaving the state park, headed toward 90. It's gonna be on Ranch Road 674. And uh, that Lowe's grocery store is gonna have uh, more traditional items that you're gonna need, maybe like fruits and vegetables and, and other kind of supplies that you just can't get at a, at a local dollar store or a gas station. So. Just wanted to mention that in case you need more of a traditional style grocery store. But just to give you a perspective as to how close everything is here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park, that's our campsite right there. Number five. If you take the uh, concrete path down here, uh, you'll find yourself right near the restrooms and a very spacious parking area, as well as a wonderful day use area. Uh, the trailhead to the long way home trail also starts here uh, but they have about six aluminum picnic tables with standing grills out here all nestled in the trees uh, it's very nice very cool place uh, we had a storm last night um, we were without power I guess for about six hours and so it blew over several limbs last night so um, that's why there's so much debris on the ground this morning but just a great place to bring your picnic out here and, um, and check out the amazing views of the surrounding hills. Y'all, we're seeing this a lot at our state parks. Uh, the state parks are doing a really good job of 
using our natural resources uh, to help benefit the park. Um, and here you can see they have a, a rainwater collection system. Now, I've seen some really good examples of this uh, at Mother Neff State Park and Mission Tejas State Park. So uh, check those videos out. You can see how they have their rainwater collection system set up. Uh, but this one is rudimentary. Uh, they just put it in the middle of the concrete tank that was already here, but it works, y'all. Uh, popping the water down, so that's really cool. The bird blind here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park is really nice, y'all. Uh, you can smell the cedar just when you start walking up this way. Uh, but very nice facilities. Very well maintained. They have several windows for you to look through. And you can see if you can spot your favorite bird. And they also have a couple of benches here if you want to sit down. Just very peaceful. Very nice place to come out and check out your favorite birds. Y'all, this is the entrance to the Stewart Bat Cave here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. This cave um, is included with your admission fee, so there, you don't have to register to do this. You just need to come out here between dusk and dawn. Uh, they have a really nice seating area. Everything is ADA compliant out here. Um, just a, a word of caution, uh, the ramp leading up here is, is quite lengthy. But as you can see, they have several places to sit. Um, they have this area secure. They don't want you crossing the barricade for your own safety. Uh, but you can, you can stand here and you can watch, um, watch the bats come out. And then over here, y'all, they have some informative panels that you can read uh, while you're waiting for the bats uh, to, to make their flight. So get out here. Get out here and come check out the bats at Stewart Bat Cave. Let's talk about your activities out here at Kickapoo Cavern State Park. If you're headed uh, east or west on Highway 90, uh, San Antonio or Del Rio or points beyond, uh, please uh, take the time to come out here to this park. It's 22 miles on Ranch Road 674 out of Brackettville. It's well worth your time. I would say the number one activity out here is checking out the cavern tour on Saturdays at one o'clock. Make sure that you reserve your spot on the, on the webpage. Uh, they only allow 10 people to go on the tour. Uh, the cost is 10 bucks. You can use your state park pass to get a discount. They require you bring two flashlights. They provide transportation and helmets. Um, if you don't want to do the tour, because the cavern tour, if you've been to Longhorn Caverns, Cosmic Caverns, or any kind of underground cavern tour, it's pretty much the same. Um, you can check out Stuart Bat Cave. Uh, just... Be aware that you need to be up uh, between dusk and dawn to see the bats coming in and out of the cave. Uh, that's free of charge. Um, you can just sit there. They have a nice viewing area that you can see the bats come in and out. Um, also, they have an amazing trail system here. Make sure you check out their trail. They have one really long trail called the Long Way Home Trail that's almost seven miles. Really good hiking. Um, Make sure you wear comfortable shoes. They also have a nice bird blind that you can check out. Uh, bring your bicycle out here. It's very peaceful, very quiet. It's not overcrowded. Uh, those are just some of the activities. They also have a great day use area for picnicking and enjoying the surrounding view of the hills. Um, so y'all, y'all get out here and come check this park out. 
We all had an amazing visit to Kickapoo Cavern State Park. Had a lot of time to reflect, uh, a lot of relaxation, but it's time to move on, time to hit the trail, y'all. Uh, next weekend, we're headed to Mustang Island State Park. So come and join us for that one. But listen, if you enjoyed the content of this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. when our videos post. And to all my current subscribers, guys, you rock so much. I appreciate all your support. All my future subscribers, guys, what are you waiting for? Get on board. I see a lot of campgrounds. Drop me a note in comments if there's a campsite that you'd like to see. And remember, I'll see you at the campsite.